Okay, it's Friday the 9th of March today, and I'm going to talk to you today about Gaia as a character, or ecological themes in History is on the Make, which is the first book of a series called Call Them Soldiers, which I am serialising in draft form um, under Creative Commons licences in a communitarian zine that I'm developing at marginalia.eu. Um, <clears throat> the way I want to come into this, what I want to frame this, is via a, an article in The New Yorker, which I subscribe to, and I was reading this yesterday morning. It's an article about stink bugs, and it's entitled When 26,000 Stink Bugs Invade Your Home. And the subtitle, These uniquely versatile bugs are decimating crops and infiltrating houses all across the country. Will we ever be able to get rid of them? It's a pretty unsettling story, actually, because I guess it shows just what we are doing to the ecosystem from, from one point of view um, in America. The stink bug, or this type of stink bug, what's it called? The brown marmorated stink bug, yes, um, and it's not native to, to America, anywhere in America, it's from Asia, and it comes across um, on, in this case, in a pallet from China, they think, I believe, um, if I remember correctly. Um, what is interesting is that it reminds me very much of a passage and a theme that I introduced into uh, history is on the make. Now, history is on the make began as a kind of narrative frame of Call and Soldiers as a whole, uh, which I will describe elsewhere in greater detail, and you can look up the wiki at marginalia.eu to find out a little bit more about it. Um, but essentially we've got a few guys from the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma originally, who were actually travelling down from a new settlement in the Yukon where they have been forced to move to uh, because of environmental destruction and because of um, the nuclear conflict essentially as well. And in this I started to view it as, I started to view this trip, it would be a road trip um, and it would permit me to look at what has been done to um, the ecosystem in North America and what has happened with conflict and civil war, nuclear war and everything else. Originally Call and Soldiers is set very claustrophobically in Manchester in England and Manchester in this take is essentially, um, it's in 2061 so it's, 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 it's unravelling in the future. Um, but it's essentially a, it's a play on Prague and Prague's history. Um, and it looks at what would happen if England closes and becomes totalitarian in a similar way to um, the satellite states of the Soviet Union in the past. I will read a bit of this passage to you and then talk about why I was reminded of it um, by the New Yorker story. That I read yesterday. George woke me up at a few miles shy of our first stop near Watson Lake. I had fallen first into a morose mood that had perturbed them and then fallen asleep. They had reclined my chair and I had slept through the First Nation bands of Pelly Crossing, Little Salmon, Carmax and the Teslin Tlingit Council where the boys had pulled up to make their greetings and ask about the situation down south. Brett and Jerry had been dispatched to the pickup, where they sat in a bench seat with rifles at their feet, shouting over the wind, buffeting down at them from the light rig over the cab, facing the road back onto the late evening sun, looking like they were in their element. We were still surrounded by forests and hills, driving east along the border with British Columbia. The forest was relatively thick, but the trees were young, 
planted in sections with fire bricks, grey-brown logging strips and irregular settlements. And, if there was a lay beauty to it, still, there was little that was now natural about it, and the signs of environmental stress were obvious, with browns predominating in regular swatches of the canopy. Armillaria, bark beetles and cankers had been known to have spread through the managed forests and patchwork monocultures of this area from the time of the first stresses of the 30s, and the various chemical and pathogenic interventions of that decade had failed or backfired with mites and parasitic wasps adapting to their broader environment more resourcefully than had been anticipated. In the days before I came out, I had taken a look at a couple of old copies of the National Geographic, including the famous forest special of 58, the last hemp edition before the drastic downward circulation revision, the issue which was left in piles on sidewalks all over the country as a last-ditch marketing ploy, and, with all of its colour photographs of forests around the whole nation and its euphemistic avoidance of all of the voyeuristic photographs of human destruction and once great cities came for all of us to represent what we had done. We were not into the worst of it yet, but here it was now in front of me, and indeed all around. It was half past eight in the evening, and but for those stops we had been driving all day. I think that does it. It's... um. The important thing here is about the bark beetles, the cankers, and the various environmental stresses and the problems of the forests. Now, when I started to write this as a, as a road trip, uh, which is absolutely something that makes sense given us in this section, in the narrative frame, I am investigating America and the myth of America. So, thereby, there's no better way to look back than via the the Native American people of America as well, um, t in order to kind of investigate that myth. But here I have in particular the bark beetles and I have an introduced species, the mites and the parasitic wasps, which are used actually to destroy the bark beetles. They're used against other species, species which have taken over. Um, in the environmental stresses. Now I remember writing some of these passages and they're passages which certainly I'll have to go back and rewrite. Um, I have, as I'm going, I come across the various questions, what will they see here, what will they see here, who are they, and so on. So in the first couple of drafts and passes of this uh, take of the story, I am coming against a whole raft of questions. But it's interesting that actually the parasitic wasp in particular, which I've used for its symbolic value as well as anything else, is actually something that is being discussed as being introduced um, in order to control the stink bug. And I think it would be great if you could kind of find the, the New Yorker article, take a look at that, take a look at the story of the stink bug as well, and then see... Um, where we are going with, with our uh, current ideas about controlling the environment, because the stink bug just finds a loophole in all of our systems of working with, or the kind of animal husbandry and, 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 and working with the land um, in these huge monocultures. And it finds a niche and it just absolutely uh, destroys that crop. Um, it's pretty omnivorous. It will eat any kind of, um, okay, not omnivorous in a literal sense, but it will eat lots of different kinds of crops and then just happily go and live in people's houses over the winter. Um, and it's pretty kind of dystopian in itself just in that sense. Um, and it has its own symbolic value. You can look at this as a story, something that Gaia is telling us if only we listen to it. Um, but because the stink bug does not actually um, pesticides don't kill it. Our normal pesticides don't kill it. So even now we're using things like uh, Roundup from Monsanto, which only recently is going to court. Um, all of the evidence about Mons on Roundup is hidden from us, essentially. Um, but 
we are trying to take these very drastic measures, such as introducing other species, to control such things as the stink bug. And my question, the question I was asking here, is really, do we know all of the variables that are involved in the environment um, in order to predict what effect something like that will have? And my question to you is go out there and take a look and see what you think about the idea of introducing species. The whole idea of this is to make you think about the various um, issues and let me know what you think about it. Um, but that's one of the issues about ecology within Call Them Soldiers that I'm investigating right now. Thank you.